and welcome. This is Chart Wise Women with Mary Ellen McGonigal and Erin Swenlin brought to you each and every Thursday afternoon. This is the show where we share our wealth of wisdom uh, with an eye toward helping to educate you, our audience. Uh, of course, we always have something that we can learn. And this week, certainly, uh, I would say, is a lesson, depending on how we uh, view it. Aaron, how are you surviving? Uh, do, you, do you have your umbrella out or are you uh, hunkered down here? I'm kind of hunkered down right now. It's mm -hmm. uh, not looking so great in the market. Um, yeah. I I would have to say that at this point, you know, with my diamond subscribers, I'm going to probably be suggesting watch lists instead of getting in right now. <laughs> I just, um, I think we might be getting close to kind of a capitulation point, but. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can get into that. Actually, let me share with you what our theme for today's show is. And uh, that is, we're calling it headline making stocks that'll soothe your rattled nerves. It's been quite a period here, certainly over the last week and a half, lots of red on people's screens and certainly unnerving giving the drops in some, uh, the decline in stocks in some areas. But Aaron and I managed to uncover some bright spots in this market. And that's what we're going to share with you. Uh, Aaron. I think you were going to begin by giving your outlook on what you're seeing as of today. Of course, we know each day is going to bring a different uh, additional piece to this puzzle, if you will. And then from there, we'll go ahead and share with you areas that uh, are actually uh, bucking the downtrend, if you will, and, and some nice bright spots that are out there. So Yes, there absolutely are. So I am mm -hmm. excited to see some of these stocks and, and share them with our viewers. But how about our wisdom of the week? Yes, of course, we must start there. And I think we both agreed that if you, as an investor, and you're constantly screening the markets, that if you go ahead and screen for what we're calling momentum, those stocks that are outperforming during this down market, they could just be uh, trending sideways or ideally outperforming to the upside, those stocks are the ones that you will want to pay attention to, uh, certainly during every kind of market condition. But during this period, as the markets are struggling, those stocks that are outperforming, once those market pressures lift, uh, those stocks do tend to go on to be your winners. So this is not a time to sit on your hands, so to speak. Uh, just continuing to stay on top of the markets will really serve you quite well. Absolutely. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that, the market and then we can get into some of our stocks. So yes. I'm going to deal it right here. Sure. And then we'll get and into we'll talk this. about that lovely headline. So um, can you see my screen right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, right now, this is a picture of the spy. And we've been watching this bearish rising wedge. And, you know, we've tried to fall and, and uh, you know, execute this particular pattern, which is bearish and we're supposed to expect a downturn, but we've managed to hold on to that 50 day EMA and now we're not. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now we're seeing that drop. And typically with a rising wedge, if you measure the back of that pattern, that's pretty much what you're supposed to expect from here on down. And that, I mean, that's a long decline that could take us all the way down to the 200 day EMA. So we just need to be on our, on our toes. But I have to say, I'm, I'm looking at the, the VIX here at the bottom and this measures your sentiment and people have gotten extraordinarily worried and bearish right now. Typically when you see those penetrations of that lower band on my inverted scale, since the VIX is a measure of sentiment, sentiment is contrarian. So I always flip my VIX, if you will. But we're mm. seeing that penetration down there. And so if you look at previous times, we've had these penetrations of that lower Bollinger Band, it usually is a sign of a little bit of a rebound coming in the next day or two. So that might offer you if you're in some of these stocks that are getting unloved right now, it might give you a chance to sell into some strength and then maybe look at some of these stocks that we're gonna talk about today. Very good, I, I like it. I, I uh, 
the concept that we could be close to that capitulation, of course, is of interest. So uh, yeah, we're going to keep an eye on that, of course, and then the volume as it plays a big part in that uh, possibility. Perfect. Yep, absolutely. Okay. At, uh, support yeah. levels. I mean, we could find support all the way at, you know, about 370. So it may not be, it might not turn out to be a disaster here, but uh, certainly not looking good right now. Right. Not, not pretty, as they say. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and start with our first headline segment here. We thought we would share with you uh, seven stocks to help you forget this negative impact that high rates are having, particularly on growth stocks. That's an area that is getting very, very hard hit. As many of you may know, the reason is because these high growth stocks, particularly technology, they tend to trade on future earnings uh, and those earnings going forward, should we be in a high interest rate environment, will be worth less. So hence, high growth is really getting hit very, very hard. But I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And uh, Aaron and I are going to share with you stocks that, again, are in that growth area. They are not uh, terribly horrible looking at all, really. So a lot of these are going to be those recovery stocks that we covered a couple of weeks ago uh, with the idea that as the vaccine continues to get distributed, you will see these uh, names that are more geared toward people gathering together again at some point. So first up here is Red Robin, RRGB. We can see, in fact, today the stock is up uh, over 7%. And this has a lot to do, again, with that recovery play, but the company also did just come out with their earnings. Now, I, I cannot fib and tell you that they came out with great numbers, not the case. What they did do, or what management did, is talked about the concept of casual dining really coming back into play once mobility gets increased again, and the outlook for a higher per person ticket uh, as the recovery takes hold. So what we're looking at here is a stock that has broken out of this nice one month base. We do have this RSI and your MACD characteristics are positive, but what I like is the breakout is occurring on relatively high volume. And that can gives you a sense that there could be further upside for the stock. It already has been in a nice downtrend. We're seeing a lot of these stocks that gapped up on the vaccine news are continuing to, uh, since then, we're in an uptrend and some of them are getting new uh, boost, if you will. So that was one name. Uh, certainly I, I will share, uh, Aaron, if you tell me when you want to look at some of these. Uh, oh, absolutely. I, I can talk to them on your screen, no problem. Okay. Yeah. So next up, uh, we'll pull up a stock here, again, that is also all about when uh, we can all get back together and uh, watch concerts together, among other activities. Mm -hmm. This is Live Nation. They actually own uh, Ticketmaster. And I thought, well, gosh, let me just go on Ticketmaster and see, is there anything? Are there any tickets? Uh, Aaron and I live in the Los Angeles area, so that certainly should be a vibrant area for some sort of uh, upcoming events. But really, it was mostly, I went into May, and a lot of it was just comedy uh, comedians that were at local area places, nothing major. I did see major headliners were rescheduling for 2022. So, uh, but the uh, enthusiasm is here. LYV, of course, in a very confirmed uptrend, a little bit overbought here. And we can see the uh, MACD poised for certainly a pause at the very least, similar to this period. I'm going to pull up another one, Aaron, and mm -hmm. let, let you uh, share your your wisdom here. Absolutely. And, uh, this is one of the, uh, there are several certainly uh, cruise ships, Royal Caribbean. This is RCL. I love this chart. You've got really what it looks like a possible flag formation here. You can see that uh, even though we're having that decline, we're, you know, right now holding above that 20 day moving average that um, 
and, and that's a good sign. Now, I, you know, I do worry a little bit because, you know, we are having these breakdowns, but this is just one of those areas, that travel area, that's starting to see some love. Um, another one that you could actually pull up is um, Carnival CCL. That's one mm -hmm. that I've been uh, watching as well. And you can see this one is still in a nice confirmed uptrend. You have, uh, you know, momentum is, is starting to, you know, a little bit uh, flattening out here, but you could see at that RSI, it really needed to pull back and get back into that positive territory and out of overbought, but we're still in a really nice rising trend. So this was one of the, the cruise lines that I also like. Very good. And I'll go ahead and share some other names that are, again, uh, growth areas, but are withstanding the general downward pressure that we are seeing in that area. This is uh, Dorman Products, D-O-R-M, and it's not a particularly robust uptrend, but certainly when you see a stock hitting a new high in a period where uh, everything around you is declining seemingly and not doing so well, uh, these guys are all about auto parts. They are a little bit smaller as far as a company. It's about 3.4 billion market cap. But again, uh, hitting a new high, breaking out of this two week base here with outside momentum indicators. And uh, they do have very good growth prospects as well. Let's take a look at another name that is going to be also travel related. Of course, this is Trip Advisor. Uh, we're certainly not early with this particular stock. Uh, this segment is more to uh, perhaps brighten your spirits to show you that not all is uh, down and out as far as the markets, these travel related. So we would, I would, uh, Aaron, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I would look for a pullback certainly, right? Absolutely. Back to that 20. It seems to be the personality of this stock on this particular rally. Mm -hmm. And it is very overbought, oh so it sure. needs a little bit of that. Yes, we're up here with that RSI and then that MACD. Once MACD gets way up here, there really is just nowhere for it to go. So anticipating a pullback similar to the beginning of this year and, and then a potential another leg up. Let's take a look at a broadcasting stock. There were a number of names that we could have chosen from in this area. This is 21st Century Fox, F-O-X. Uh, not the prettiest, it's a little sloppy, but uh, we can see that it is another stock that broke out of this nice one month base. And we are getting that nice volume, high volume characteristics that could potentially point to a new high. And then uh, Aaron, if you wanna take a look at this durable household products stock, it's middle B-M-I-D-D. Yep, and another good one here that honestly it was very overbought when you look at that RSI, it's starting to pull back and we needed that on this particular stock. And that little pullback is making a nice bull flag. So mm -hmm. the expectation is that breakout after we get that pullback that uh, will complete that flag. And again, you're gonna see a lot of these names that are having a bad day today, but it's really constructive as you like to say, mm -hmm. Mary Ellen. I mean, these stocks can't go up forever and it actually makes them a little cheaper uh, right. when, when you have that opportunity on the pullback. Right, and a nice volume on that breakout for MIDD. And I think uh, we have one more to go here and it is in an entirely different area. It's not particularly recovery related. This is Tenaris, TS is the ticker symbol. It's a steel stock and it's stealing the show. How about that? Yes, I've been <laughs> bullish on steel for weeks right now. So it's been a, an excellent area of materials for sure. Very good. I think we're gonna take a very quick break. We have other stocks that we certainly want to share with you, get them on your radar screen. And uh, I believe our next segment, we're, we'll be talking about some high yielders. So uh, we will be right back. The goal of the Decision Point Show is really to give everybody a, a good idea of what's going on in the market in general, but we also like to focus it down on some of the major areas of the market that you should know about. We look at dollar, we look at gold, we look at bonds, we look at oil, and then we bring it all together. 
and give you a, a very quick, easy to look at, know exactly what's going on. But then we also have our bonus material, which is where you get a little bit more of that, things that make you go, hmm. And we are back. Uh, take a look at this happy guy. He is just as pleased as we are to share with you <laughs> some uh, stocks out there that offer not only an attractive chart, they have a nice high yield. And of course, that can be a wonderful buffer in a bumpy period in the broader markets. Uh, first up here is Aris Capital Corp, A-R-C-C. -C. And the oh, stock- get the screen. All righty. That would be helpful. And then I'll share some insights as far as what this company does. They have a uh, not only a portfolio of mid-sized companies, they also help with debt restructuring, emergency financing. So you can imagine that their services have been in pretty high demand. But of note is the stock has an 87 two percent yield almost nine percent and it's in a very nice confirmed uptrend here again uh going back to this nice base breakout here on november 9th uh, i believe there was fear for quite some time back here that their debt restructuring pre-pandemic would run into repayment issues. This is a lot like those bank stocks, so that that vaccine was good news, but then also they've been uh, also being- In that relief area. You bet. You bet. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice high yielder. Let's take a look at a life insurance stock that offers a 5.1% yield. This is a name that many of you may know. Erin, uh, if you want to take a poke at this. It's Prudential Financial. Absolutely. And again, I, I must be pointing out all of these bull flags. They're just all over the charts right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's mainly we've had some nice rally. And again, the market is, is pulling back. And of course, that's putting pressure even on some of these really nice stocks. But this one's set up. It's, you know, like I said, a flag. There's your pennant on it. The expectation, of course, is an upside breakout. Love the RSI staying positive, love price staying above the 20 day EMA. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of pullback on that momentum, but again, you would expect to see that and we don't have any negative crossovers as of yet. So mm -hmm. I think this one still looks pretty good. Yep, and a nice 5% yielder for those of you uh, wanna take note of that. Another name that we can take a look at here is also going to be in an area, Erin, that you, have been uh, following. This is Rio Tinto, R-I-O is the ticker symbol and it is a general mining stock. It is getting hit today, no doubt, uh, but it's close to a 5% yielder. Uh, let's yeah. see what we can be on the lookout here for. Yep, the general mining I have to say is a lot looking a lot healthier, if you will, than the gold miners. I'm still not at all um, happy with what they're doing, but I know I I had talked about an ETF called XME, and it's similarly it's in that particular area, the mining metals and mining, and you can see it's pulling back a little bit there, but certainly holding on the moving averages that you want to see that 50 day especially. And, uh, you know, so I'm still liking this one, full disclosure, I own it. If I lose that 200 day um, or the 50 day, I'm sorry, moving at average, then I, I might have a, a, some second thoughts there, but I think this one still looks pretty good too. Oh my gosh, great. Okay, we have time for one more name. I'll share one that's been on my MEM Edge report for quite some time. Picked uh, This is Co America CMA. Put this back on the list in October on my MEM Edge suggested holdings list. Has kept it there. And it is pulling back in line with other bank stocks today. We can see it got a little bit overbought, but the nice yield here, 4%. And generally speaking, a lot of these stocks, these bank stocks are a little bit overbought, anticipating a pullback here. So we will use, as Aaron pointed out, historical precedent. We can see that it can easily get to at least this 21 day, even the 50 day, and then potentially uh, rebound. Bank stocks are renowned for outperforming the markets during periods 
of a recovery. So let's move on. We have other areas that we certainly want to share with you. A uh, couple of names here. Our headline for this one is the stars have aligned for these <laughs> names. So we have a handful of stocks that, again, are really just bucking this general downtrend. So we are going to go ahead and share those names with you. First up here is Groupon. Erin, I don't know, do you, have you used uh, Groupon? I know I've been a fan. Yes, I did actually over Christmas. And mm -hmm. I, I do find it really helpful. Their app is dangerous though. Definitely turn off those notifications. <laughs> Well, I will say their app and their new structuring is what has Wall Street really excited. They came out with numbers. They weren't particularly stellar. It was just this new regrouping, ha ha, Groupon, that the <laughs> stock has done that has analysts on Wall Street really uh, actually excited about the upcoming, the prospects for the stock. So we can see that uh, big volume on this breakout and it's continuing to trend upwards. So uh, again, a little, we can see, I like to go back historically, you can see it can have these big moves and continue to advance, but certainly we are overbought in this uh, current environment. Let's take a look at another name that is uh, again, doing well in an area. Uh, this is also has an app that's very vibrant and it's called Weight Watchers, WW. And uh, I guess Oprah Winfrey bought this company a couple of years ago and they've done a lot in the way of restructuring. I'll let you take it from here. Yep, absolutely. Uh, again, that nice rounded bottom that you can see coming in that you've um, so adeptly and annotated for us. And again, the, these stocks that did get a little bit uh, overrun, I mean, this, this one had that great move um, last week and into this week, and we needed a pullback. And sure enough, I mean, it, it's a little bit of a, um, it, it doesn't feel good when you have almost a 7% pullback, but when you look at that in relation to that rally that we, it just had, it needed this, it needed to come back down, and this is a great opportunity. Very good, yeah, they came out with good numbers above estimates and improved subscribership. So let's take a look. We have one last area, one last segment that we are gonna be uh, reviewing here today, and that is growth stocks. And for those of you that have not been following super closely, Growth stocks have really taken it on the chin. This is Vanguard Growth ETF. Take a look at that waterfall oh, there. Get the screen back. <laughs> All righty, let's uh, do that. And I know you're see. so excited to show the chart. I know, I just get right into it. Oh my goodness, yeah. So just take a look. This is, again, VUG, that Vanguard value ETF. Uh, just, again, taking it on the chin. But uh, we do have names that are in that growth category that are actually, as we say, bucking the trend. And again, these are names you'll want on your radar for that when the markets turn and uh, we get back into an uptrend, they will be outperformers. Uh, first up is Charles Schwab, SCHW. Company came out with great numbers. And Aaron, I'm sure we can imagine why <laughs> Charles Schwab would be uh, have good numbers and be in an uptrend. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, with with the increase in uh, stock participation uh, mm -hmm. across the public, of course, you you're seeing more and more people getting into this investment area. And you know, again, this one is pulling back, but you can see really strong support right around sixty two dollars. And again, it was getting very overbought. Now it's pulled back, but it's still got a positive RSI. And, you know, honestly, momentum didn't take that much of a hit. It moved mostly sideways. It has turned down today, but come on, it's, it's yeah. not a normal, almost. We just showed you what the rest of the market's doing. <laughs> yeah, so let's take a look, because here's another area. I know you and I both follow this area fairly closely, and it is surprising because interest rates are going up, but there are any number of stocks. This is LGIH. I feel like maybe I can pull up a, I want to say better. Nope, that's not a great one, uh, but there think. is a vibrancy here. HOV. Yes. Havani. Yes, Sylvanian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they just came out with numbers. They are, a couple of them are reporting their numbers this week and triple digit as far as their growth with home 
uh, new home sales and home building. So this is another area that uh, this particular stock broke out of this flat base on very big volume. I think uh, we may have time for one more stock yes. here before we go to our la our segment where we share with you an unusual headline. This is a, a China's largest e-commerce platform, and it is uh, primarily discount uh, their products that they offer, and it's VIPS, V-I-P-S. So Aaron, I'll let you. Yeah, I like that. Actually, pull up one more stock for me, and that's American Express, AX. Oh, you bet. Mm -hmm. Loving this stock. Still yep. think this one has a lot of growth left for it. You know, positive RSI today's pullback, very constructive. Uh, this is another one, of course, uh, American Express is kind of the travel credit card. <laughs> so I'm thinking this one hand in hand with some of those recovery stocks. Very good. That makes perfect sense. As people begin to uh, travel, you'll see more ex, uh, use of your, your Amex gold card, yes. shall we say. <laughs> okay, let's move on to our last segment here. And it is, yeah, that happened. And this is where we share with you unusual headlines around the world. And this is from the UK, where uh, a gal ordered from Uber Eats, super hungry. I believe it was a double cheeseburger, fries, the whole works. And you can watch the progress on your Uber Eats app, how close and is the food. It was just about to get to her. And the driver texted her and said, sorry, love, I ate your food. <laughs> Oh my goodness! But surprisingly, the get she was not an uh, overly annoyed. She just reordered, and <laughs> I thought I that guess that it was, was a real big tip for that. <laughs> yeah, well, that was it. They they said, "What tip would you like to provide?" So let's go ahead and share a couple of names uh, with that in mind. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at Uber, the stock. It is not doing particularly well, certainly in line with the markets down another 7% today. So uh, yeah, we've broken key support. Our outside momentum indicators are down here in negative territory. Yep, software's getting hit for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so from here we can take a look at, because Uber Eats of course works with any number of uh, food providers and uh, take a look here at Starbucks. It is pulling back, but I must say by and large, the stock is generally holding in fairly well. So uh, we can certainly keep that particular stock on our well, radar. That was actually one of my diamonds on, gosh, Tuesday, I believe. So I'm, I'm looking at this one to definitely rebound. Mm, very good. And any other restaurant names that we can take a quick look at here? Certainly McDonald's is not doing particularly well, but uh, we can take a look at, I'm trying to think of uh, P-L-A-Y. They're not so much of food, but this is Dave and Buster's. I just had to point this one out because <laughs> it's so counterintuitive to what we're seeing. Uh, this is a restaurant bar. The stock is in a very, very confirmed uptrend here with all of your momentum outside indicators up there in an uptrend. So uh, Aaron, we have time for one how last. About, how about theme? Bloomin', Bloomin' Brand? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Makes this me think of a Bloomin' out, Onion. Outback Steakhouse, very good call. Yep, another one in a very nice confirmed uptrend. This is another stock where management came out with positive comments after reporting fairly naturally dismal earnings. But again, this is all about everyone going back. And it is in line with that casual dining. We can also take a look at this company is due to report tomorrow. This is Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. We did uh, bring this up a couple of weeks ago, and it's acting very, very well in the face of a very difficult environment. Erin, I think that's it for this week. Yes. Everyone, keep your seatbelts on, and uh, we will see you next Thursday. Happy trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.